Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Music Through the Years. This is a brand new series. You are joining me tonight, Reese Gain, for episode one of series one. I am so excited and joining me for the very, very first episode to talk about his life in music. What influences him the most is Dr. Stevo Nuissier. Hello, Dr. Stevo. Hello, bonsoir. Thank you for having me in your, in your show. Not a problem at all. Are you happy to be here? I'm delighted to be here. Excellent. So what kind of things are you going to be... Just give us a brief overview of what we're going to be having a chat about this evening. Um, I would like to, to, to think about, uh, to talk about, uh, yeah, I think about it as well, uh, all the, the artists who kind of shape my uh, music influence and, and also life. Cool. So where did it all start for you in music what got you into music first of all i have always liked music as far as i remember i remember when i was young uh, there was this french singer called Chantal goya uh, she had like f- uh, kids songs and i was doing show with my uh, teddy bears and stuff like that so i always had this idea of i don't know making song uh, and for me i was the one singing the song and uh, I, I don't know it, it hasn't changed much um and then i've seen bands like the cure on tv because they're really famous in france and i um or the goth and um the gothic people in the um and i always find the artists that i'm listening to really close to my heart and um uh, so as far as I, I, I was concerned, when I was uh, at school as well, in high school, uh, um, I was good at singing, kind of, I think. And uh, so there was always something for me really um, interesting in uh, in the music. And But it took me years before I could uh, afford to buy an instrument. Um, but uh, so singing was easier. So what was the first instrument that you brought? Not necessarily learn maybe but brought first a bass a bass guitar my mom nearly killed me because i spent my first wage <laughs> uh, onto my first bass uh and i remember it, uh, i i took it took me weeks i think before i could even play it so i was just standing there looking at it <laughs> didn't even know but i was so happy and uh it was a yeah the best choice i ever made and what sort of thrill do you get out of playing the bass or making music in general i think for me music is the connection is what connecting all of us um to something higher uh, as human being um for me i always took this example like um, in any religion music is always there um if you go to a church to a synagogue to a mosque uh, there's there's music there's melody there's uh, for me it's it, it's really important to the fact that you can go to China to to um, Gabon to um, Los Angeles to Mexico you always will be find people making music whichever type of music it is there's something really unique and you um, describe us so um, define us as human being is music I think. So talk to me about the first artist then that really inspired you because I, I've got on my screen here a wide variety of artists from yes. Joy Division to The Cure. Yes. So pick your first artist then that you, you would like to, to talk about and the song that we're going to play and why that has influenced you. Uh, definitely The Cure um, because as far as I remember, I remember seeing them on TV and thinking, wow, these guys are wearing makeup and dressed strangely but they look so cool uh and they were i don't know the music was amazing and they yeah just but different they look different and um he influenced me a lot cool so the first ever song on music through the years steve please introduce it's close to me from the cure
that was the cure and close to me on music through the years and i think you've got a good anecdote as to why you started playing bass in particular so tell us the the whole craze behind the cure in france uh first uh, yeah, um there's uh, there's this um word we have this word in french uh, called a curist, which is basically a word for the fan of the cure. So uh, in the eighties, you were either like a punk or gothic, or and you had the curists, which is uh, are just the people, the fan of the cure. This is how big the cure are in France. We love them. Um, and I remember when I was in high school with my friend, we want we all wanted to you know the usual make a band, and uh, my friend, my friend Fred. Um, uh, wanted because everybody wants to play guitar, uh, and he was like, "Oh no, Steve, you're gonna play the bass." I was like, "What is the bass?" And then I really got into the cue, and I was like, "Oh yes, of course, I want to play the bass," because the cue, I think, is one of the bands where the bass doesn't really follow what um, the guitar, you know, the, the bass line is pretty different and really uh, specific. It got their own because uh, a lot of Bands I I don't really like because the bass line is not really interesting. But I always love the bass line of, of the Cure. It's just amazing. Simon Gillip is yeah, definitely uh, something I uh, someone I um, I think and uh, yeah, I love I love the bass. Did you meet him once as well? I, I did actually. <laughs> in the Oxford, in the street here in Oxford, uh, I've passed. Uh, I passed him in the street, and then I was, my brain was like, "Oh, I know this face," and then I went back, and I had to t- tell him that, of course, I was a, a fan, and I told him a lot of things, but the only thing I didn't tell him was a happy birthday because he was on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of fun <laughs> uh, because when I posted on social media everybody was oh did you did you wish him a, you know a happy birthday I was like, no I was too too shocked to see my hero in front of me yeah it's always it's always quite inspiring trust me I've had many of those moments where you meet someone that you you're a huge fan of and you just don't know what to, what to say to them apart from it is thank weird. you. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah. It is weird. Really I I bet you felt that way as well. Like the only thing you could say was thank you. Yes. You know, cuz it is a sign of gratitude really. Sure. And I suppose if you meet Serge for instance, I wonder what your reaction would be then. So Serge Gainsbourg for you is a big part of your life. He's a big influence as well. He's probably one of the few people that did cry when he passed away. Um, I think also I I don't really write often in French uh, because his lyrics I think are amazing, and uh, the level of his music is um, is is amazing. I is is always going to be an inspiration for me and. And he, he did influence a lot of people. Uh, it was one of the first... I even heard some um, hip-hop artists um, saying that because he was the, one of the first guys who ever s- speak on, on, on a record, uh, he did influence a lot of hip-hop. Uh, and um, and bands that I love, like Porty Said and things like that, they all also... Um, uh, put him uh, or air. Uh, they also put him uh, as a as a big influence. He's, a, he's an amazing artist. So everybody knows Je T'aime, of course. Moi non plus. <laughs> but you've gone for comic strip. Yes, it's an amazing thing. Uh, comic strip is about. Uh, I mean, once again, it's just genius. About you know, uh, you remember? Have you have you ever seen the the, the Batman? movies you know the the old one the original one where they every time they they uh punch each other you have like a, a pin path yeah oh, yeah this is exactly what he's doing in the in the in the song oh, i look forward lyrics. to hearing <laughs> it so this is comic strip by serge gainsborg on music through the years Viens, petite fille, dans mon comic strip Viens faire des bulles, viens faire des Des, 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 et des Je distribue des swings et des uppercuts Ça fait, ça fait, et ça fait Ou bien, ou parfois même 
petite fille dans mon comic strip Viens faire des bulles, viens faire des Des, des, des et des Viens avec moi par-dessus le building Ça fait quand on s'envole et puis Après quoi je fais et ça fait That was brilliant. Never heard a song done in such a unique way before. That was Serge Gainsbourg and Comic Strip from Comic Strips to Bob Marley. So this is quite a crossover. Yes, well, I'm, I'm that type of person. I'm going to listen to uh, Serge Gainsbourg and then Bob Marley and then, I don't know, to some um, I don't know, classical. Uh, um, for me, anything is good, is great. And actually, Bob Marley, Mr. Brown, because that's the song that you're going to play. Uh, Mr. Brown is one of the of my favorite ever song. I love the sound of the keyboard first. Uh, kind of remind me of a song of uh, um, called Sexy Boy uh, for different reasons. And also what I love about Bob Marley is obviously his lyrics. Uh, the, the story of about, uh, Mr. Brown is uh, that the story about this ghost uh, in Jamaica, and uh, it was and people was like, oh, who's Mr. Brown? Uh, people were seeing him. That's the story behind Mr. Brown, and um, and I think the um, the vocals, the chorus. I always love how the the backing singer, uh, the arrangement they had. I think the 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 best backing singer in any bands ever. That's quite a big statement to make. That's a very big statement to make. What made you come to that? Um conclusion um listening to it amazing it's just uh, the 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 weathers i mean bob marley his voice is unique but his backing vocals his singer that he was working with they had an amazing song and, and sometimes i i try to to do the same when i sing because i always get them in the back of my mind when i sing to to arrangements and stuff like that well when we get into the second half of the show we are going to talk exclusively about your new album great which is called Breakfast on Mars. Very interesting. Well, after our little quiz halfway through, you always enjoy a quiz. If you've listened to any of Dr. <laughs> Steve on radio, you all know Dr. Steve loves a good quiz. So that is coming up very, very soon. So this is Bob Marley and Mr. Brown on Music Through the Year. Mr. Brown is a clown 
So we get to the halfway point and every um, music through the year show will follow the same format. So the first half, because every show about 45 minutes long. So the first half will be talking about artists that influence you and then the second half will be talking about yourself and your music. So Breakfast Great. on Mars, Dr. Steve-O. Great. Um, well, it's, in, um, it's my new album which just came out last month on the 30th of January, which is my sister's birthday. Um, um, it's, a, it's a collection of sound, of songs, of tracks, because it's an instrumental album. I wanted something really dancey uh, for the dance floor. Um, and also... But it is it's kind of um, going in the other way usually because the la the last two songs are pretty chill, so I went the other way. I think uh, maybe people would have started with a chill out song going all the way to dancing, song. but I was like, no, let's go straight to the dance uh, part of it. Cool. So here I've got a quiz. Yes. On the cure. 10 questions excellent wow. of the cure so before we play a track from your album right. are you ready to have a quiz yes about the cure of course here we go let's see how many you can get <laughs> so how many singles have the cure released 37 42 32 or 47 okay Thirty-seven, forty-two, thirty-two, forty-seven. How many singles have the Cure released? Okay. Uh, do you need to answer? I do. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven is correct, Doctor Stevo. Well done. You're welcome. What was the name of the first ever band that Robert Smith formed? Malice, Obelisk, Strange Days, or Easy Cure? Oh. I would say Easy Cure, but uh, I think that the first band they had was Malice. So, ah. Uh, um, ah. Uh. I think they started as Easy Cure, but their first band when they were young was Malice. Let's have a look. Are we going to go for Malice? Um, yes. Yes, Malice. No, incorrect. It was Obelisk. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Complete the lyric. Yesterday I got so scared, I shivered like a child. Yesterday, away from you, it froze me deep inside. I felt like I could cry. I did not find the smile. It made me want to die. It made me want to die? Let's have a look and see if you're correct. No, it froze me deep inside from the track In Between Days. Oh, you're probably saying that in the second verse then. <laughs> <laughs> there have been 19 official members of The Cure. Yeah. True or false? 19. 19, yes. Uh, false. False. Is that correct? Nope, that is true. There have been 19, 19 members of The Cure. Have you got the names? I don't have the names, no. Unfortunately, we don't have time. Lot. Yes. But what was The Cure's first ever single? 10.15 Saturday night. Yes. Boys Don't Cry. Jump in someone else's train. Or Killing an Arab. What was The Cure's first ever single? 10.15 Saturday Night, 
Boys Don't Cry, Jumping Someone Else's Train, 10, 15, Saturday Night, Killing an Arab, 10.15 Saturday Night. Is that the right answer? No, it was Killing an Arab. Was it? It was. Okay. Where do the cure originate from? Horsham, West Sussex. Crawley, yeah. West Sussex. Crawley. Tonbridge, Kent, Maidstone, Kent. You're going to go for Crawley. Yes. That is correct. The cure came from Crawley, West Sussex. Two out of ten <laughs> so far. Let's get that score up. Lullaby and Love Song were singles from which album? Disintegration. Straight away in there, before I've even read the answers. That is correct. Disintegration. Which other band has Robert Smith played guitar for? Sixty and the Benches. Correct. Yes. You're on a roll now, Steve-O. <laughs> when was the album Faith released? 81 or... Uh, what's the, what's the story? 1981, yeah. 1982, 1979, or 1980? Is 80 or 81 because it was after Ian Curtis' death. Uh, when did Ian Curtis die? Um... I would say 81. 1981 is the correct answer. And the final question, Dr. Stevo. The Cure recorded a track on the Art of McCartney album celebrating Paul McCartney's work. But which song did they cover? How to Scouter, Hello Goodbye, Drive My Car, or Got to Get You Into My Life? How to Scouter. Incorrect. It was... Hello, goodbye. So, Dr. Stevo, for one of the Cure's biggest fans, fifty percent you got there. Ooh, not that. So, toy breakfast <coughs> on Mars. What about this track that you love? Um, it's it's, uh, it's I think it's my favorite track from the album. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's. Um, I think it's the best line. I don't know. It's uh, for me that would be the um, yeah probably the, the the main part of the album. I've kind of made them one after the other, but toy is um, I think it's toy is the first one I, I've made and then decided to make an, a full album out of uh, the songs. Wow! So shall we? Play Toy Breakfast on Mars. Please. Your radio debut. This is Toy off the new Dr. Steve O album, Breakfast on Mars, on Music Through the Years.
That's my favourite on your new album. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds think alike. So, Steve-O, we're coming towards the end of yes. music through the years. Have you enjoyed your time on the show? Yes, amazing to to yeah to get back to to yeah all this uh, artist. Definitely. Thank you very much. So, um, explain to the listeners then how me and you met because it is quite an interesting uh, story. Uh, that was uh, my last gig, actually. Um, and you were playing also uh, with another band. Yeah. And I actually, I was really surprised because you played Hey. I, I will always remember that the first song you played from your set was Hey from um, uh, the Pixies. Yes. And Hey is one of my all-time favorite songs ever. Uh, and I didn't know that you guys were going to play only Pixies but the fact that you play Hey as well um, yeah it's, uh, it's like Mr. Brown's have, uh, it's a song that I've got on my phone and uh, I, I love this song so. it's a great song yeah, it's, a, it. it's a really great song and then yeah um, just got chatting about uh, figured we had the same taste in music and everything which was great and I suppose I asked you the question because it's you were saying it's always nice to revisit old artists and you have all the memories and everything but would you ever consider sort of fame as the goal or do you think that there is a side of being famous in the music business that not many people want to know about um, I think that's the the fame side that you um talking about doesn't interest me um but being popular uh, it's um i've you know what i as long as i remember as even at school i always been someone popular someone that people know um a lot of people know my name more and sometimes i, I didn't know theirs um so i'm you know kind of i kind of n- have an idea of what it is a lot of people because of the way i look always look at me in the streets for different reason so i kind of have an idea of what it is but the next artist that you're going to play is someone who's really famous but she's famous for what she's doing and not for um just to be famous you know if that makes sense um there's a reason why she's famous yeah so what is the reason why um Mylene Farmer which is also going to be our last song of the evening as well which is a shame because I really really enjoyed having you on Steve thank you it so, was a pleasure Mylene Farmer so um what makes her so unique from everyone else that we've had on the show tonight She's someone who's uh, have, um, who has still has a really uh, secret personal life, but everybody knows her. You like it? You like her or not? Uh, everybody knows lo- knows her, uh, but you don't know anything about her personal life, and that's why I. She's not even on social media or anything. Uh, I don't think she even has her own uh, website, you know. But she's always going to be number one. Uh, a fan like me always gonna see she's f- filling up stadium. I think she she filled up the st- um, the Stade de France twice, which has eighty thousand people. Um, I think she's the first artist to do that. And um, but she's not on social media. She hasn't got a uh, own website because she doesn't need to. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a great thing to 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 learn uh, because on nowadays a lot of people are famous for no reason and with no talent, and that's not what I'm looking for I, I'd rather have people to listen to me with that. that's why sometimes I don't even put my 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 face on, on things because I want people to listen to the music and not to look at where I'm very very positive message there thank you so much everybody for listening to the first episode of music through the year Steve have you enjoyed your time I love your show thank you so much for having me Reece. not a problem thank you for talking about your experiences and we hope to have you back on the show again very soon My pleasure. thank you very much Dr Steve and for the final time tonight would you please introduce our last song of the evening yes this is Milan Farmer with Sans Logique good night <laughs>